Your friends are scrolling through short content, but you, my friend, you're here to learn. Welcome to the RS Clips. At least in our city, Mumbai, and I probably also speak for Delhi, Bangalore, because I see a lot of adult acne there as well. Yeah, yeah. Uh, in all the metros, there's too much adult acne. Mm. I travel around the country for work. Mm. When I go to tier two and tier three, there's lesser less adult acne. Hmm. Why is this happening? Is it because of the air? Is it because of the food, the water? Um, because it can't be as simple as uh, city people smoke, drink, and you know have a wrecked sleep cycle. There's mm. got to be something which is not controllable by city people. Like I know some of my healthiest friends who are dealing with a lot of adult acne. I'm glad you brought that up. Why is your healthiest friend dealing with adult acne? There could be two, three reasons which I've always seen. The most healthiest fellows coming with adult acne. One, either they are on protein supplements, which in excess cannot be digested by the body. In an absence of carb, cannot be digested by the body. So it becomes really difficult. And that excess protein is inflammatory. So it's counterproductive to your body. That's exactly when you have acne on the back, acne on the face, all this happening. That's number one. If you see a, a smaller town guy who's also exercising, like my cousins in Mangalore are all buff, shetty buff guys. But they're all eating regular food to get that protein. They're not pumping in protein powders. That's what they do here. That's number one. In a lot of, like you said, the media guys and the healthy girls who get adult acne, I have seen the main thing is excessive dieting, zero fat, zero carb diet, and the so-called keto diet and intermittent fasting not meant to your body because it, it disrupts your hormone cycle. You end up literally, there are people who come with not even getting periods. So that level of disruption to the hormone is happening. Obviously, there's going to be acne. Obviously, it's going to pop somewhere. So therefore, you see more. But obvious, like you said, metros, there is pollution, there is sleeplessness, there is addictions, there is blah, blah, intoxications, X, Y, Z. Along with it, it's stress. Simply stress of looking good. So mm. let's not look at stress as this, you know, major I'm an achiever and I have eight hours of working and 20 hours of something else. Simply stress of turning out well is a stress. I see young adults going through the stress and mama's bringing young adults and saying, I don't know what to do. She refuses to meet people because there's acne. I'm like, it's acne. It's fine. I'll treat you. That's a separate question. But to start with, it's fine. It's acne. So the stress of looking good today, I think is half the stress. Mm, okay. Uh, you've given me 10 tangents to take you upon. <laughs> uh, so I don't actually know where to go with the conversation, but mm. I'll probably go in the direction of myself. Okay. okay? Uh, the one thing I figured through the show by talking to a lot of doctors, uh, even like we've had people like uh, Luke Coutinho, we've had like, you know, health experts yeah. as well. Uh, I've realized everyone's bodies are different. So true. Like, and some, a food that suits someone may not suit another person. Which is why you'll see someone eating lots of cheese, drinking lots of milk, and it's fine, their skin is glowing. And another person who has even a cup of milk or a little cheese, they get a lot of acne just because of that. I think that's the primary uh, thing I've learned about skincare, that everyone's skin is different and it will get affected by your diet. And as an adult, if you're dealing with adult acne, you have to figure what foods work for your body and what doesn't. And probably what diet works for your body and what doesn't. Have I said something wrong medically? No. In saying, no. Would you like to add anything to what I've said? No. You're, you're right. You're right in what you're saying. All I want to say is you're talking still about physiology and pathology, all of that coming together, microbiology, all of this coming together since we're talking science. I will tell you there is variation is something as fixed as anatomy in us. It's linear, right? Here, there are 10 things which are influencing, like you said. There is food, there is lifestyle, there is another one, there is somebody coming from some region, somebody knowing to digest something else. All this is coming. Anatomy, which is more like linear, there is so much difference. Like I'm an expert with face, for example. If you cut up my face and your face, the facial artery, which is supposed to have a course like this, wow. is different in you and different in me. And there's so much percentage, which is like this, so much percentage. Which is like so that also is so much varying. How can you expect one million things that is happening to be consistent. No two people are the same. Mm. So when I said that different foods suit different people, uh -huh. uh, what you're chipping in and saying is that, yes, because even though we're the same species as human beings, every human's anatomy, when you actually cut up the body, it's fully different. 
No, so I am saying something as linear as anatomy is different. But if you are sticking to food, let me make it more simpler. So if you are sticking to food, for example, you and I both have a cup of milk, right? You are Punjabi. Yes. Okay. So you have been born in North India. You have understood. Your system has understood digest wheat, digest probably chana. I am a South Indian. My system does not know how to digest that. So innately, my system knows to digest rice. I won't put on weight. I eat rice every meal. I don't put on weight with rice. But you may put on weight with rice because my body knows how to digest and use it to my best possibility. Two, gut bacteria. Your microbiome is very different because you've had coffee. I've had tea, for example. You've had antibiotic yesterday. I am against pills. Various things might have made your microbiome different than mine. And again, microbiome is very important for you to digest what you're breaking, break up what you're eating. That is different. Everything is different. The way you may boil is different than the way I may boil. The cow that you are using is different than the cow that I am using for the milk. You may put something in the milk. I may not put anything in the milk. So there is so many variations. Genetically, you may be getting acne. I may not get acne at all, no matter what I do. You may have your oil glands bigger, different. I may have oil glands differently. Your hormones are different. Mine are different. Nutritionally, certain vitamins and fats are different in you, different in me. So there's n number of variation. That is why a glass of milk to you and a glass of milk to me will never be the same and will never give the same. So as a doctor, when multiple personalities are walking into your clinic, how do you even begin if everyone's so different? Yeah, so that is where a detailed consultation is important. I mean, there are you, you were just going back to you asking me, what's the difference between a good to great? For me, even if you have a, a demand for your time, I still don't see more than 22 to 25 patients in a day. And I work from 10 to 6 with no break, with like okay. a 10 minute break. I give a lot of time to each patient. I see the patient myself. I do have doctors working with me, but I will still be the one asking you, what is your name and age? So I will literally take a detailed history. That is where I differentiate you from another. I will go into very details from your childhood to now. What is your skin like? What is your parents' skin like? Where have you traveled and what is your... Diff I literally go through very detailed history. Okay. That is where I decide. If you enjoyed this video, make sure you check out this playlist for more videos just like this. It's TRS Clips.